Good morning, Saints. So let's take purpose to a higher level today. I think something which needs to be talked about and preached from our pulpits today is encouraging the encouragers. We should say those who are gifted to hand out confidence because their ability to thank and praise noble efforts is straight from God. Several years before my mother passed, I received a card from her in snail mail. No special occasion, just a thinking of you with a card titled, The Love of Jesus Shines Through You. In it, she said things like, I just wanted to remind you how proud I am of you and always keeping you close in my prayers and thank you for all you do to shine for the Lord. Since I already try to use love language, primarily words of affirmation, this kind gesture on her part filled my cup to overflowing. How thoughtful, life-giving, and life-affirming it is when someone goes out of their way to say, you, my friend, are valuable. Encouraging the encouragers needs to be mentioned regularly, and this job should be praised frequently so we can stay in line with Philippians 4.8. If we genuinely wish to change things, we need to build a huge army of undercover support teams to thwart the enemy's efforts of steal, kill, and destroy. We all have people we encounter in our lives that consistently, smoothly, and simply encourage us somehow. Well, I know how. It's called godliness. They are involved in holistic health, holistic growth, and holistic spiritual healing. Cathartic is a word comes that, which comes to mind and means liberating, energizing, and invigorating as opposed to the people who are unemotional, undemonstrative, or may even appear apathetic. Let's be honest, most of us don't do a very good job of expressing our thanks, gratitude, and offering words of life, and I will be the first to admit it. My family believed and taught us kids silly things like, if you say encouraging things to people, it goes to their heads, and they will be intolerable big heads from that day forward. When I think back on how ridiculous and impractical that thinking was, it makes me shudder. The word encourage is used only two times in the story of the Israelites wandering through the wilderness after their dramatic escape from slavery in Egypt. Both times the word was used, it came from Moses, their leader, to them. Despite their grumbling, complaining, and disrespect, Moses offers words of inspiration and motivation from God. Moses persevered, but not once was he ever encouraged. The night before Jesus gave his life through immense punishment, torture, humiliation, and a criminal's death in order to save the eternal destiny of the souls of the whole world, he invited his best friends to have dinner with him. John's account tells us that along with supper and the promise he communicates through communion, he served his brothers by taking the role of a servant. He washed their dirty feet in an act of love and respect. He encourages them and instead of receiving gratitude and words of life, support and confidence in return, Jesus is betrayed by one and denied by another. The word encourage comes from the French word encourager, spelled encourager, 
from in Korage. The word literally means to insert nerve into a thing. Make a quick mental list of who are the professional encouragers and life promoters in your life. They can be pastors, Christian friends, teachers, counselors, medical professionals, police officers, which you encounter in your daily life. My thinking here is we need to recognize them at each encounter and thank them on the spot. Some people have begun calling it paying it forward. These individuals expend an enormous amount of time and energy emotionally, physically, mentally, and spiritually to help bring hope, healing, and safety to lives of millions of broken and hurting people in our nation and in this world. You can respond, yes, but that's their job. And I will respond that they are often underpaid for their work. They sacrifice their lives in various ways to walk with people through their tragedy, trauma, and darkest days. All to earn a paycheck which barely pays their bills and does not cover the emotional trauma they suffer. In many of these jobs, they are also the recipients of verbal abuse, name-calling, harsh criticism, psychological manipulation, and displaced blame games. There are several psychological defense mechanisms that our minds generate as a way to protect ourselves from further emotional and mental damage. Without proper self-awareness, and often unconsciously, people use their pastor, nurse, and counselor as a punching bag or the target of their grief, anger, and pain. These behaviors naturally push people away in relationships with. So the professional helper attempts to stick with it and work to it assist the patient to learn strategies in the direction of healing with these issues and confront the pain, whether through different avenues such as medical treatment, education, psychological interventions, therapy, or scriptural teaching. Because the patient or client or incurrent use these mechanisms, the underlying pain and hurt are not appropriately dealt with and healed. Many times it is soul damage due to their lack of serving God in the past. So instead of true spiritual healing, their same cycles of negative behaviors, relationships and communication struggles and addictions all resurface. They re-manifest all too often, I may add, and they end up feeling hurt or rejected by the helper in their life because of this. Then claim, I put all my hope in you bringing me full healing. And you failed me. Here are some examples from the work of John M. Grohall, PSD of defense mechanisms that, left unchecked, can end up harming those who have dedicated their lives to helping people heal. Acting out is performing an extreme behavior in order to express thoughts or feelings the person feels incapable of otherwise expressing. Projection is the misattribution of a person's undesired thoughts, feelings, or impulses into another person who does not have those thoughts, feelings, and impulses. Displacement is the redirecting of thoughts, feelings, and impulses directed at one person or object but taken out upon another person or object. People often use displacement when they cannot express their feelings in a safe manner to the person they are directed at. The classic example of this 
is the man who gets angry at his boss but can't express his anger to his boss for fear of being fired. He instead comes home and kicks the dog or starts an argument with his wife. The man is redirecting his anger from his boss to his dog and his wife. Naturally, this is a pretty ineffective defense mechanism because while the anger finds a root for expression, its misapplication to other harmless people or objects will cause additional problems for most people. Patients and clients of professionals that regularly employ these types of defenses seem to fail at times to see their counselor, teacher, or pastor as a person. Human beings with their own debt, bills, struggles, conflicts, stressors, and family dramas as everyone else. They can easily be ensnared in the lie that these helping professionals are a substitute, stand-in, or proxy for the power of God and work that they should be doing with God emotionally, mentally, and spiritually and for the ownership which they should be taking for the lack of growth or healing in their own lives. Teachers, doctors, therapists, or pastors are not responsible for your personal change. They only guide and teach. They are not and cannot be a person's savior because there is only one and his name is Jesus. Their job is to point people to a relationship with the healer and to help them learn how to identify and manage their stress, anxiety, or pain independently. To help create a space for people to share their burdens, shame, guilt, and fears without judgment or condemnation. To share wisdom and advice that will encourage people who are willing to renew their hope and faith in God. Their job is to offer strategies and tools for anyone to put to use for continued success in the future. But they are not genies, magicians, or wizards, and tools don't work unless a person does the hard work of using them themselves. There is no substitute for the work of Jesus on the cross. There is no replacement for the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. But often we can be blinded, discouraged, get off track, and need to be rerouted back into knowledge and understanding of these truths. Jesus paid it all for our sin, pain, shame, hurt, trauma, and sadness. And 2 Corinthians 5.21 tells us, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Who are the professional encouragers, teachers, counselors, pastors, and medical professionals, police officers, and soldiers in your life? What can you do this week to offer a word of encouragement to them? It could be as simple as a text, a card, a compliment, a small gift, a hug, or some act of kindness. Dear Heavenly Father, teach us today to be alive in your spirit at all times so that we may see your spirit in our fellow brothers and sisters. Teach us to praise whatever is true, noble, and right. Empower us to commend what is pure, lovely, and admirable. Teach us to speak well of excellent and praiseworthy efforts we see in our daily walk with Thee, O Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray, Amen.